All right, all right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Again, this is a replay. Um, I really do appreciate your time and again attention today. I was a little bit a little bit louder in the main campus uh, campus center. So I'm going to reintroduce myself. My name is LaQueen Battle of Battle for State Responder Services. Um, very much happy to be here today. I am just trying to see um, if I can replay this. Okay, this is it's not a replay. It's actually um, a redo. So bear with me, guys. Here, okay. Um, this is a redo. This is a redo of the report that I gave earlier this morning. So I'm actually having to redo this just like a second time around because of the, the noise. So bear with me, guys. Here about um, uh, the report. Okay, so I'm going to introduce myself. You can follow me here. Um, let's go to my LinkedIn profile, and then we'll get more into the weather. My name is LaQueen Battle. I'm a community health worker here in the state of Massachusetts. I'm also a medical assistant and published author. My nonprofit is called Battle for Safe Responder Services. You can follow me here on LinkedIn.com, and you can also see, actually, um, credentials and certifications. So I'm currently applying for a master's degree in public health um, online and I am, have uh, actually attended classes here at Harvard Medical School this past semester. So um, I'm very happy actually to be in programs here. So um, last night I became a, we a winter weather spotter for the National Weather Service in the NOAA. So I'm very happy to actually be a part of that. So um, actually very happy to become a national weather spotter. Okay. All right. So thank you again to the National Weather Service Center for that too as well. Okay. All right. So again, my name is LaQueen Battle, medical assistant, founder of Battle First Aid Responder Services. So let's get into the weather of forecasts and trends and almanac and as well as a global climate change reform to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the global energy and climate change report um, that's listed in various organizations we're going to talk about today. So here we go. Um, we're going to briefly get into uh, the forecast for today uh, for Revere, Revere, Massachusetts, here in Revere Beach. Forecast today is 40 degrees Fahrenheit, high of 40, low of 30. On the next five or seven day, Tuesday, uh, Monday, tomorrow, the 23rd, high of 39, low of 30, all the way up to Friday, high of 34, low of 27. Sunday, high of 31, low of 29, up until the last day of January, high of 40, low of 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So is the, the temperatures are very much high for the month of January. Then it goes into the historical trends and averages um, for the month of January. High of 36, low of 19. Record high is 2022 for 71 degrees and low of negative 10 in 1994. High of, of um, February, in the month of February for 2017, high of 71 degrees, low of negative 10. Um, so these are the record highs. You can also find this on the Almanac. We're going to talk about a little bit more on the Almanac too as well. I'm going to be sharing this with you guys here um, on the Almanac.com's website and go into more into detail there. So I know it's Sunday for some folks, but I'm going to pretty much get into the local forecast from there. Then it goes into the month of March. High of 46 and low of 28 degrees. Um, the record high was in 1998 of 84 degrees and low of 0 degrees in 2015. High in March for 84 degrees in 1998, low of 0 degrees in 2015. So um, those are record highs. It's a little bit high and the next report we're going to talk about is Almanac, comparing those high averages and those high temperatures. Like I said before, for the month of January, the high was record 71 degrees. Here, if you join me, guys, on the right side. 
high of 71 degrees in 2020 during the U.S. presidential election and low of negative 10 degrees in 1994. Um, and that was during the uh, U.S. presidential election between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. So bear that with me, guys. Keep in mind for me as well. So, if you're getting to here, so here's the record highs and the record lows. Again, it is 71 degrees in 2020, back in January, two years ago and negative 10 degrees in 1994 um, in, in the month of January. Then for the month of February, it was a record high of 71 degrees in 2017 and a record low of, 20, of negative 10 degrees in 2016. So this year, in 2023, um, for the month of January, the average high was 36 degrees, which was a little bit um, a medium warm and a record low of 19 degrees. So it was moderate, moderate weather changes for the month of January. This year in 2023, for the month of February, it was average high of 38 degrees and average low of 20 degrees for the month of February. Up until March, average high of 46 degrees for this year and average low of 28 degrees for the month of March. So those are the average temperatures here, if you pay attention to the right side. And it talks about rain precipitation falls. Average rainfall uh, for month of January was 3.42 inches. February next month will be 3.31 inches. March is 4.27 inches. Average snow for the month of January, 14.52 um, inches of snow. For the month of February, average temperatures is 12.9 inches in March 7.93 inches for the average temperature for the average falls in the month of March again it is Sunday for some folks so I do apologize for that um, we're gonna go ahead and keep this in mind and bear this with mind too as well okay so today that the weather history is I'm gonna go ahead and get it to almanac a high of 36 and low of 18. As you can see, the record temperatures do fluctuate. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit higher in May than June. Um, April is going to be uh, pretty bringing into the early spring. Um, March, April, um, high of 45, uh, right here midway, 45, 50. April, um, April, 60 degrees. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the almanac.com, almanac report. It says here, it says temperatures throughout the month of January are expected to be below average for much of the U.S. from the plains eastward. Also, New England will likely turn out to be above average, as will also be the case for the Russian contiguous U.S., as well as Alaska and Hawaii. So, will there be snow in January? According to the Farmer's Almanac, time-tested weather formula, there will be snow, but probably not as much snow as, as a snow which would be expected. On average, we'll see about near normal amounts of snow from the coast to coast from the west to the east. However, there will be notable month-to-month -month variations. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the official website for omelette.com. So, 
if you join me guys on almanac.com this is not a wrestling match you can find more information and reports on almanac.com says 56 days until spring begins on almanac.com all this information is available here relative humidity the amount of moisture in the air compared to the maximum amount of moisture the air could hold at a given temperature is measured as a percentage of the saturation. And um, pretty much that's the relative humidity. So it's the amount of moisture in the air compared to the maximum amount of moisture the air could hold at a given temperature. Okay, so just bear with me here. Um, it talks about the spring frost dates, the moon phase, the snow, the full snow moon, the sunrise and the sunset. All of this information is available on almanac.com. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get into the month of February. Long range, long range weather forecast here on Almanac, official Almanac.com website. It says right here on the Almanac weather summary, summary, winter temperatures will be above normal in the north and below normal in the south. The coldest periods will be between the, in early to late January and late February. Precipitation will be above normal. Snowfall will be below normal in the north and above normal in the south with the snowiest periods in early to mid-December and the first half of January. April will be cooler and drier than normal, while May will be warmer and drier. Summer temperatures will be above normal, with rainfall slightly above normal. The hottest periods will be in, in early to mid-July to mid -July and early August. September will be cooler and drier than normal, while October will be warmer and drier. So all of this is available on the Almanac official website. So as Sam right here says, even any kind of precipitation, winter, snowfall, rain, it says precipitation will be above normal. Snowfall will be below normal in the north, okay, and above normal in the south. So expect a little bit higher snowfall in the south regions, um, Georgia, um, Louisiana, Probably good into Nevada, uh, Colorado, South, South, East, Southwest, Baja, Loja, Lower Baja, California. Here, according to Almanac.com, snowfall will be, be below normal in the north and above normal in the south. With the snowiest periods in early to mid December and the first half of January, April will be cooler and drier than normal while May will be warmer and drier. Summer temperatures will be above normal with rainfall slightly above normal. The hottest periods will be in early to mid July and early August. 
September will be cooler and drier than normal, while October will be warmer and drier. So say it's going to be hot July and a hot August. September will be a little bit, a little bit uh, cooler, but it'll still be hot. And September is going to be a little bit drier, while October will be warm and dry. And all of this is available on Almanac.com. So here is the month-to-month uh, -month forecast. January, late January, snowy, sunny but cold. The end of the month of January is going to be snow and chilly. Temperature is going to be two two degrees above average, with 25.5 degrees on the Fahrenheit. In the north, but one degree lower in the south. Precipitation is going to be 6.5 inches above, 3 inches above average, above normal um, in the, in the mid-east, in the northeast. So here is for the, the long ridge, long ridge weather forecast for the northeast. This is available, all available on Almanac.com. Okay, and let me get into here for uh, Almanac.com as well as the, the previous one that I did before. Um, on Groundhog Day. So let's get into here. For Groundhog Day for Almanac.com. Okay. So February 2023 forecast. What will the Groundhog Day say? So all this available on Almanac.com. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and get into the forecast a little bit better. So thank you for bearing with me. I really do appreciate it. Okay, all right. So it says right here, it says um, February temperatures will be warmer than normal from the from the west of the Pacific coast as well as across Alaska and Hawaii between below normal. Expect below normal precipitation from New England throughout the Carolinas and west of the, to the Great Lakes, Michigan, Chicago, um, Missouri, Ohio Valley, and deep south as well as across the Pacific Northwest and Hawaii. It will be wetter than normal across Florida from the Central Rockies to the Pacific Southwest. Across Canada, it will be, will be warmer than average from the Atlantic Canada into Eastern Quebec and along the Pacific Coast into the Northwest Territories, and colder than average elsewhere. Precipitation will be above average across eastern Quebec and the prairies and near to below normal elsewhere. Okay, um, right here, it says the groundhog will be greeted by a sunny and cold morning as he emerges from his burrow. Right here, um, it indicates for Groundhog Day on February the 2nd will include next week, which is February the 2nd, Groundhog Day, will include a sunny and a very cold conditions in Ohio. Um, periods of snow in Aurora, Colorado, snow and wind in Nova Scotia, and a chilly sun in Ontario. This would be appear to be six more weeks of winter throughout Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Canada, Ontario, Canada, with a sooner arrival of spring in Nova, Nova Scotia, Canada, and Colorado. So what is saying for the groundhog, the groundhog this year in 2023 is expecting to see six more weeks of winter in six more weeks of winter okay all right they did change this about five minutes ago they probably updated it um will be sunny and mild during the game for a super bowl um in glendale arizona valentine's day um dressed warmly with hats and gloves um, be prepared for Valentine's Day. Blistery winds and snowy parts in the southeast and the deep south will monitor a couple of snow showers for the west of the front wage of the Rockies, while much of the west will be dry and mild for outdoor parts. Hawaii will be cool with a few showers for Valentine's Day. Atlantic Canada will be mild with the passing snow shower, while conditions will be dry and mild in the prairies and wet with showers in southern British Columbia. 
So this is the forecast for uh, Groundhog Day, okay? All right. Let's go ahead and get into the NOAA, the National o Oceanic um, Aeronautical Report. The sea level trends right here, expected to be um, in uh, New England. Let's go ahead and enlarge this here to show you what the coast, the beach coast front says here for the winds as well as the trends, what's going on here in the waters. Get into that here. So Boston, it does show about, here's the green. Um, it shows about zero to three um, feet over the over, um, um, normal tide in Boston Providence, Providence, Rhode Island area. Uh, normal tide, a little bit higher tide in New York and Philadelphia. Um, a little bit higher tide, six to nine feet above tide in Washington, D.C. Um, up into Canada and Maine, Portland, Maine, um, medium-sized tide, zero to three feet per, um, in uh, Portland, Maine, and New Brunswick, Canada, Nova Scotia, Canada, Quebec, Montreal, and Ottawa. It shows a little bit higher tide as well. All right. So thank you to the NOAA um, in Revere, Massachusetts. Um, right here, in Revere Beach, it shows humidity at 80 degrees. Wind is at 14 miles per hour. Precipitation is at 13 degree, 13 percent precipitation. Like I said before, going into um, rain, uh, to end of the month is at average rainfall, um, 3.42 inches of average rainfall. Uh, to end of the month of January. At high on the 31st, Tuesday the 31st, high of 40 degrees, low of 30. All right. We're going to finish. I'll make this a quick report today. And we're going to get into the Boston Foundation's climate climate reform report in just a little bit. Bear with me here in mind. Keep this in mind with me here. Okay. On their climate change re climate report. Um, report. All right, so uh, we have the weather underground here in Cambridge. It says the current temperatures are at 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Today, expect precipitation uh, about um, a high chance of rain later on this evening at 67 degrees, 67 percent chance of rain about 6, 5.30 to 6 o'clock this evening on Sunday the 22nd, up until 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock earlier Tuesday morning, midnight, around midnight, between 37 degrees, which is a high, high tip, uh, high for the month of January. Um, get into here with uh, a 90 to 100 percent chance of rain later on this evening. So you expect rain later on this evening when everybody's at home asleep. All right, so keep this in bear, bear this in mind here. Again, here we're gonna get into the AccuWeather a Coastal Flood Advisory Report here. Same thing. Right now, we're going to get into the air quality report. The Boston Air Pollution, their official website is aqicn.org. Okay, so it said here that the um, air pollution quality is good. Okay, so there's less of a chance of air pollution, but still, keep in mind, which is good, the air quality is low. Right now it's at 30, to 30, um, 30 AQI uh, for uh, Sunday, January the 22nd. You can see all of these here on their website, aqicn.org. Um, it might be a little bit um, more um, higher uh, higher, higher um, variation about today around 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock when everybody's outside driving around in the car going out for Sunday dinner you can expect that to increase um, the air pollution index to increase later on this evening about 7 to 8 o'clock so keep in mind if you still want to wear your face mask 
you know, keep your keep your face mask, you can. It's just according to whatever protocol or whatever environment that you're in, as well as to stay hydrated. To stay hydrated and to uh, stay on your regular medication regimen is prescribed by you and your doctor and your family practitioner. So keep that and bear, bear that in mind with you. So thank you to the Massachusetts Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs uh, and the EPA for giving this um, air quality pollution, air pollution um, uh, index. So thank you to the EPA as well. environmental affairs. So again, thank you to the Boston EPA and the Environmental Affairs for giving us the Air Quality Control Index. Again, it is uh, going to be a little bit higher, the air quality, about 7 o'clock to 8, 7.30 to 8 o'clock later on this evening when everybody's outside having dinner around Copley Square or in the suburbs or probably about... Um, um, Everett, um, expect there to be increased level of pollution, air pollution. If you still want to wear your face mask, I would be considerate as well continue to get tested for COVID-19 as well as the flu virus, which is still rampant in the air. Okay, so here is the air quality control index. Their official website is right here. I'm going to go ahead and give this to you guys. AQI cn.org okay and aqi i'm putting all of this here aqicn.org try to put this here on the website okay aqicn.org and all this is available in the website okay So again, in the the air quality again because it's, the, it's still COVID season, it's still the the um, the um, uh, coronavirus is still has is still a public emergency. Um, expect there to be an increased level of air pollution from today on, on um, January the twenty second. All this is available on the website for the city of Boston up until um, the 20, the medium, um, probably low to moderate um, air pollution from Monday the 23rd up until 24th, 25th, and all of these here is in this index, okay? Let me just try to find this here. So AQI is 23, but three to, um, seven here okay right here Okay, up until uh, Wednesday the 25th, okay, from sunrise to sunset. Okay, you can see the wind ties here, the wind change is 7 miles per hour, Nautica. An increase of wind, uh, wind change on the 23rd and 24th, up until uh, Wednesday and Thursday here. Um, Thursday um, morning, high tide, tides, high wind changes, and it does have... Here is saying the air quality and air control index. I wish I can get it to a little bit different. Um, let me check. See here. Okay, here we go. All right, so here again to the 
um, EPA and the Department of Environmental, Environmental Protection from massair.com, epa.state, uh, eea.state.ma.us. And I'm also going to be putting this on the, my, the, my official YouTube channel. It does say right here in yellow that the air pollution is moderate. And green means good for air pollution, air control, which is good. And yellow is moderate. Orange is unhealthy. Red is, is healthy. So here, today on Sunday the 22nd, which is yellow to orange, yellow to orange about 9 o'clock this morning to 12 noon, it does have about ye about yellow orange, okay? So that means it is um, um, moderate to unhealthy of, of air pollution in the air. It just depends on what part of the city you're in. If you're in the more urban area or if you're in the more rural parts, it might be a little bit, the air pollution might be less. But if you're in the more urban parts of the city, um, it might be increased because of the car traffic as well as what's going on. So again, the the um, air the um, air quality index might be a little bit changed from there. Okay. Okay. All right. So the air co air quality control index might be increased from there. All right. Okay. So I'm just going ahead and get into these reports here to finish this out. Here's the Weather Underground report. If you go to weather under, w, u, w underground com, you can see the reports too as well. I'm going to get out of there. Here is the air quality index like I just got through saying right now. The UV does say it's low. So the ultraviolet, the, the UV is low today. Four miles per hour is a light breeze with a south southwest of a winds a light breeze. Sunrise today at 7 7 a.m. Sunset at 4.45 p.m. tonight. Okay. The humidity is high at 79% chance of humidity. So the humidity is high with a low chance of precipitation at today, this morning. But it is going to be increasing in precipitation later on this evening with low winds at 4 miles per hour. The increase of winds during around the Revere area going up into Portland, Maine. Increase of winds. Okay, so I know I'm just, it's a long, it's a long winded report, but please keep this in mind with me, guys, because I do this report usually once every couple months, and you guys can follow along with me here, too, as well. So thank you to the National Weather Service, too, as well. So uh, let's get into um, Telemundo and Univision. It does talk about health as well as um, salud and... Um, Here, it does talk about salud and health. Talks about preparing your diet. Um, estudio pone en duda los beneficios en ayuda en también tente para baja de peso. So right here, lowering your weight. So sufrí un contada durante un manicure. So taking care of your nails, taking care of your your health as well as cancer. Um, gas, diabetes, uh, even in Spanish, right here on uh, Vision and Telemundo as well. Okay, get into Telemundo.com. Even into Telemundo.com. It goes right here to telemono.com and salute and health. So 
diluted health here um, right here Roe versus Wade um, talking more about you Medicaid health uh, distri dist uh, pill distributions for abortion abortion at morning after pill here as well um, Inside the day clinicals, talking about your diet, losing weight. All this is available in the Spanish language on Univision and Telemundo as well. Uh, pregnancy, um, una cada ses mujeres for two, six women who admitted uh, to drinking alcohol during pregnancy. It's all available here um, on Telemundo as well as Univision too as well. Okay? So thank you to Telemundo Noticias. And they um, and uh, topics about health, salute. Thank you to Telemundo and Univision as well. So thank you to that. All right. So that's available in the Spanish language as well. Okay. All right. So okay. So we're gonna go ahead and finish off to that COVID report, COVID nineteen report. On the EPA, like I said before, the UV, UV index is low at 1. The light breeze at 4 miles per hour in the south southwest. Sunrise today on Sunday, the 22nd. Low, uh, sunrise at 7.07 .07 a.m. Sunset at 4.45 this afternoon. Okay, we're going to get into the climate change, the climate, re the climate reform report in a little bit too as well. Okay, so bear with me here. Um, for the OMIC report... Almanac, it says temperatures throughout the month of January are expected to be below average for much of the U.S. from the plains eastward. Although New England, from Boston to Portland to Philadelphia to uh, Providence um, to um, Connecticut, will likely turn out to be above average, as will also be the case for the Russian contagious U.S. Um, uh, precipitation will be above average um, right here not precipitation but temperatures will be above average for the west coast Los Angeles Seattle um, Nevada uh, Colorado for the west west coast uh, US as well as Alaska and Hawaii so let's just keep that in mind here the air quality index control here is on the official website eeeaonline.eea.state.ma.us. Right now, it's saying the air pollution pollution control index is good. Green means good. Yellow means moderate. Orange means unhealthy. So right now, at this time, at 12:30, 12:25, the air pollution control index is good. So green means good. Are right here so keep this we're almost done for my for my morning uh, report here again today for Revere Beach here in Boston 40 degrees high of 40 low of 30 degrees humidity is at 80% chance of humidity 80% 80% uh, chance of humidity today so please stay layered as well as protect your extremities your neck um, wear a face mask if mandatory or just to be on a cautious side because COVID is still coronavirus is still in the air uh, please continue to get tested for coronavirus as well okay so let's get into the Boston Foundation's report for the inaugural Boston Climate Progress Report for November 2022 Let's get into the Boston Foundation's inaugural Boston Climate Progress Report. And you can find it on www.tbf.org. Alright, so let's get into the Boston Foundation's Global Climate Global Global Change Report. Uh, 
um, inaugural cl Boston Climate Change um, Progress Report for the Boston Foundation. It's the annual 2022 report. I'm um, gonna get into their goals, like I talked before, talked about before, on the previous report. With their goals in climate change and climate energy, uh, the departments that were involved in this: utilities department, uh, real estate, healthcare, uh, community organizations that were involved as a, as a part of this report. As a part of this report, we're going to head thank again thank the Boston Foundation for their uh, progress report. So here are the overall goals for the Boston Foundation's Global Climate Change and Climate Reform Goals progress report for their annual 2022 uh, report. So. They want uh, net zero emissions, increased social equity, and climate resilience. Again, they want net zero emissions, increased social equity, and climate resilience. So some of the goals in climate resilience Follow me on the notes section. Um, so some of their goals are they want to increase, this is with the city of Boston, the state of Massachusetts is low carbon electricity, um, equitable housing and mobility, um, targeted use of fuels and fuel um, energy. Reduced waste and sustainable energy recovery, um, sustainable carbon dioxide removal, protected coastline and waters, protected waters, as well as repair of past harms. So this is what's going on right now with the Boston Foundation. And the final goal is to electrify Boston small bit buildings, local energy planning, building a resilient coastline, and neighborhood climate justice. Again, they want to focus on electrifying Boston small buildings, local energy planning, and building a resilient coastline as well as neighborhood climate justice. Okay? So again, these are some of the sustainable goals that they're trying to work on. And we just want to go ahead and say thank you to the Boston Foundation for their annual global ch global change and global climate report. Global climate change. And global climate report, um, climate reform annual report. Okay, so here are some of the goals again. What they're trying to do with climate change and climate reform, they want right here net zero emissions, increased social equity, and climate resilience. For some of their goals again, okay? They want um, net zero emissions. And I'll be sharing this on my YouTube channel as well. Net zero emissions. Increased social equity. And they want climate resilience. Again, they want net zero emissions, increased social equity, and climate resilience. Resilience, okay? So let's talk about their goals. They want commonly accepted goals necessary to, to rise to the challenge of climate change 
the outcome is to be necessary to achieve the goals of climate change. And they want to focus on the areas that Boston must act on to drive forward outcomes under the influence of climate change and climate reform. So this is what they're doing right now. Um, they're trying to achieve these goals here again. Um, for the big top goals with the Boston Foundation is to net zero emissions, increase social equity, and climate resilience. So again, thank you to the Boston Foundation for all this information here. Keeps going on. This is a hundred page report talking about environmental risk, exposure to pollutants, extreme heat, floods, poor access to nature and green trees, poor food access, poor transit options, and limited health care access. So these are the, they even give you environmental risk too as well. Okay, so we want to thank the Boston Foundation for the report. Okay, and they even go talking about environmental risk um, as well as net zero emissions. Um, here, their goal is to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. Boston, along with the rest of the world, must achieve net zero emissions, greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. It even goes to say right here, what is net zero emissions? The entire world needs to be net zero by 2050 to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. Human and by 2050, human and energy systems need to be transformed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from 90% from peaks to balance residual emissions with carbon remo removals and to be prepared to continue mitigation and to increase removals past 2050 in the next 30 years. So governments, businesses, institutions, and households need to pursue the actions that they can best influence. And all of this is available on the Boston Foundation's website. It's talk about a uh, voluntary commitment. Marty Wash established a voluntary commitment of net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 with a target of cutting emissions in half. Voluntary community le leadership. Uh, leadership actions by Boston residents to align with net zero goals, the state target, and market forces. So again, all this is available on the uh, Boston Foundation's global, chi global change, climate change report from last year. So again, right here, what their goals are is to have a decline in greenhouse gas emissions an increase in the built environment, and an increase in driving. It says right here, it says what has happened right here. It says what has happened over the years is, is that they've seen a decline in greenhouse gas emissions, excuse me, um, an increase in the uh, built environment, an increase in, ga in driving. And so what they want to do is they want to go ahead and align with their goals and decrease these emissions, these gases from the environment. That's why they're talking about reducing greenhouse gas emissions, balancing uh, emissions with carbon removals, and to continue uh, mitigation and increase removals for the next 30 years. So like I said before, all this is available on the Boston Foundation's website at tbf.org. So all this is available on the Boston Foundation's website, and you can find this here. It keeps going on. This is about a 75 to 100 page report. It keeps going on and on and on, talking about 
it's a great great report I'm gonna give you guys this website tbf dot org And like I said, I'm I'm going to be sharing this on my YouTube channel too as well. It's a great, 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 great report. Their annual report, um, talking about uh, climate change and climate reform. Um, here, what their goals are: um, electric and efficient buildings, uh, greater use of energy systems, targeted use of fuel, fossil and alternative fuels, sustainable waste management. Responsible carbon dioxide removal, protection of the coastline, and repair of past harms. It keeps going on and on and on and on and on. A great, great, great report, great report, their annual report, or maybe every two or three years report, great report. Here on the uh, Charles River report, talking about urban heat, island intensity. This is a great, great, great report on climate change and climate energy uh, reform. Great, uh, wonderful, wonderful report from the Boston Foundation. So thank you again to the Boston Foundation for this report. Okay, like I said before, you can find it on www.tbf.org. All right. Okay, I think that pretty much, and then we're gonna go ahead and finish this off with the local weather observations at um, the International um, uh, Airport. Uh, venues here at Hoskam Field Airport. The, oh, there's over, uh, weather overcast. Um, temperatures at 31 degrees right now at Hoskam Airport. Uh, dew points at 24. Humidity is high, 76. Winds are calm at Hoskam. Pressure pressure index is at 30.21. Boston Logan Airport, International Airport. The weather is overcast. Sky is overcast. Temperature of 30 degrees. Dew point 22, humidity at 72, winds a little bit high, southwest 12 gauge 20, pressure 30.24, Beverly, Massachusetts Municipal Airport, overcast, temperature of 29, overcast, dew point 22, humidity at 75, winds southwest at 9, pressure at 30.23, East Milton Airport, no reports found, Norwood Memorial Airport, earlier this morning. Overcast with uh, temperatures of 33 degrees Fahrenheit, dew point at 23 degrees Fahrenheit, humidity at 66, winds are calm, pressure index is at 30.23. Alright, so this is what the local weather observations are. All right, so here again, here is more information for the next weather forecast. Up until today, it is a high of 39, low of 35. Going up until uh, tomorrow, Monday, snow snow mix of high of 37, low of 27. Wintry snow mix in the in the morning, 30% uh, chance of snow, and later on tomorrow evening, chance of snow and blustery. Going up to Tuesday, sunny. Wednesday cloudy and breezy with more snow on Wednesday uh, and then ending up on Thursday with 80 to 50 to 80 percent chance of breezy rain and then rain later on in the evening so Thursday we're going to finish off of um, high of 48 and finishes off at rain in the late evening okay so all this is available on forecast.weather.gov
you also have great great graphs here too okay so i'll be sharing this on my official website as official website too okay all right forecast dot weather dot gov forecast dot weather dot gov you can find that from there uh too okay all right again forecast for today at beverly municipal airport in the city of beverly massachusetts overcast with high of 29 degrees fahrenheit 75 percent chance humidity wind at, at southwest 90 miles per hour barometer at 30 uh, inches in the barometer uh, dew point 22, uh, 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Visibility at 10 miles ahead of your car. Uh, you can sit up to 10 miles ahead. Uh, wind chill is at 21 degrees Fahrenheit for the wind chill. And that updates there for their will. So, excuse me for my late morning report. I do apologize. Um, it is right now 12.45 in the afternoon on Sunday, January the 27th, 22nd. And all this is available on forecast.weather dot g o v okay i really do apologize for that and i will also be sharing this here on um on my youtube channel for battle first aid responder services forecast dot weather dot g o v Okay, all right, so this is LaQueen Battle, Battle First Aid Responder Services. Thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate it. Any other questions or comments, you please feel free to email me. You can email me at my official website. It's B-A-T-T-L-E, the number one, S-T-A-I-D, at Outlook.com. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time and attention today, and hopefully you take care. Take care of your loved ones, COVID-19 coronavirus is still in the air so please 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 continue to get tested for COVID-19 as well as of course the flu and the flu virus and RSV um, ailments um, the RSV virus and ailments, other ailments as well okay so this is Queen Battle Battle for State Responder Services live here from on the campus of Harvard University in Cambridge Massachusetts Thank you so much for your time and your attention today. I really do appreciate it. And if you do have any questions, concerns, or comments, you can email me at B-A-T-T-L-E, the number one, S-T-A-I-D, at Outlook.com. Again, that's B-A-T-T-L-E, the number one, S-T-A-I-D, at Outlook.com, Battle First Aid at Outlook.com. All right. Thank you so much for your time and your attention today. I really do appreciate it. God bless you. I'm here on the campus of Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. God bless you and have a great day.